after, I think, about 1995, was this version of the suit. Before it was a, uh, a partial pressure suit, this is the full pressure suit. It also protects against uh, decontamination, or contamination in the atmosphere. Uh, there's a toxic spill or, or whatnot. Uh, there's also also protects against fire. Uh, the, the outer layer is a Nomex, so all of you see in uh, everything that's orange on the suit is a Nomex material, which is uh, fire and flame resistant. Uh, and it also protects against uh, orthostatic intolerance. So what does that mean? Well, if you've ever, you're sitting for a long time and you get up really fast and you kind of have a little black spots come to your vision, uh, that same type of thing happens when crews come back from being in order for a period of time. Uh, once gravity uh, has its effect back on, on the body, it pulls your blood down to your two legs. So what we have, that's the first layer I talked about, is an anti-G suit. I'm not gonna have Nancy put this on, but this contraption essentially plugs through the suit and uh, constricts the blood uh, on your legs. And that's used it's used only during uh, re-entry, so we don't we don't launch with this, but it's used over the over the layers. The layers you see that Nancy's wearing right now, uh, she has on a. Uh, I feel like I'm about to give the, the, the runway description. Uh, she has on a Patagonia model uh, thermal undergarment. That's the light blue layer that she has here. Uh, one of the things that uh, is interesting about the whole suit garments are we need to protect against uh, extreme hot and extreme cold. Cold as uh, both atmospheric and water temperature. Uh, in case there's a bailout over uh, cold water and it takes a while to be able to locate and then rescue a crew, uh, we need to be able to keep them uh, from getting pneumonia or whatnot. So, so it's, it's got to keep her warm in the cold water, but it's also got to keep her cool when uh, she's got almost 90 pounds of suit uh, on her with, with the harness and the parachute. So it's about, it's about 86 pounds total. So uh, what we have on, the, on her other layer, this is a liquid cooling garment. And it's, it's also uh, a Patagonia type, uh, almost the exact same thing that you would get from uh, our uh, some other uh, <laughs> shop. Except this one has really cool plastic tubes that we plug into uh, our cooling systems. And I'll talk about that again. Uh, so that's what the, those are the players she has on now, and uh, I will go ahead and see you up. What? I, I did, have yeah, G fits. If y'all follow me, like, quadruple all my friends. Done. Awesome. All right, so what, what I'm going to do is suit up Nancy here, and this is, this is essentially the same thing that the, the crews will go through on, uh, on Wednesday morning. Uh, our team comes in with the crew. Uh, we got in on Wednesday, uh, and we'll go through a number of suit fit checks, uh, to make sure everything is working on the suit, make sure it's not leaking. Uh, and we'll go through that prior to their shuttle training aircraft runs, where the commander pilot will do touch and go approaches at the landing facility. Uh, and then we'll do that again uh, right before the uh, pause. So we put the count and put the seats on. I get to go by the time we get to this point. So, um,
you to play by play. So I can actually recoil. This is recoiling goes to a pass-through that passes through the suit. Um, and the lower right thigh. And um, yeah, that's how I'm talking about that in a minute. Cooling, cooling lines go through the suit. And right now we have an uh, ice space cooling system. This is just what we use on the ground. On orbit, we have a thermal electric cooling system. Uh, it's a totally different concepts, but it still sends cold water through the suit. And I think we'll talk more about that. Uh, 
You can see these compartments here are 16 packets of drinking water. And that's in the event of a bailout, because the worst case scenario during uh, power, during, during uh, controls like is, uh, is a bailout. And that is the, the only way a crew can get out of the vehicle while it's in flight. It, the way it works is there's a, there's a pole that extends out the mid deck hatch, uh, and extends, and the, the crews will connect to the carabiner on the uh, on that pole. They'll slide to the end of the pole. This is all during glided uh, controlled flight. Um, they will, and then the, an automatic uh, activation system will begin about three seconds after they clear the end of the pole, and that will begin to pull out first the pilot chute, then the drone chute, and then the main chute. And these are all automatic. And then the, the main chute deploys about 70%, and then another, these are all pyrotechnics, and another pyro will fire, and it'll reef out the parachute. So that's the only way we have to get out of the, the order in case there's a, there's, there's a problem. Um, there, once, once the crew member has landed uh, in the water, there's a life raft, there's a life preserver. The life preserver is also in this harness. Uh, it automatically inflates as soon as the crew lands in the water. So it's a life raft next to the, next to the crew member. And then there's all kinds of survival equipment that, they, that they'll have. And so they'll have uh, a radio in one pocket where she can go call the good guys to radio in her location to get picked up. There's also pen gun flares. There are, uh, there's a signal mirror, Starsat beacon, um, and a number of things to, to keep her to keep her alive until the, the good guys come in and rescue her.